no audio? No, no audio. Yeah. All right, good morning. St. Joseph County Redevelopment Commission meeting for October 8th. Call into order. Uh, we have our members present. Uh, Pete Mullen. Here. Stephen Fault. Here. Dennis Jordan. Here. Brian Pulowski. Yes, ma'am. And Mr. Wheeler. Here. And Jessica Clark is present. We have approval of minutes from September 17th. Any comments, Move. questions? Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? Hearing none. Moving into economic development area updates. The first order of business is General Redevelopment Commission Budget Fund 4403. So what has been provided in the packet is an overview of monies spent in 2018, what our proposed budget with some adjustments based on revenue projection, revenue projections from 2019, and then actual monies spent to date in 2019. At the bottom, there are two balances shown. One highlighted is the actual to date cash balance. Uh, not specific for this particular fund, but for the other actual TIP revenue collecting funds, we received those revenues in June and December. So the second balance shown is what we project the December balance to be once we get the second round of settlements. So at this time, our cash balance in this fund is $111,795.70. Just to also note, and this is consistent on all of these fund budgets, the items that are highlighted are the monies that are actually spent. The items that are not highlighted is still a projection of what we will spend yet this year. At this time. If Mr. Shalio, is there anything else you would like to add? No, one of, one of the things I would add about this budget specifically, when we set this budget up, this budget gives us the opportunity if we have land sales or land leases that the commission is involved in, we have the opportunity, instead of putting that money back into that TIF specific area, we could put it into this fund to provide us with additional revenue for uh, pre-development activities or project activities. So this is, this is kind of a different fund we set up a year and a half ago. Right now it's funded only by the lease payment from Ceres or SF Motors. Uh, so that's $71,000 a year, $72,000 a year. So there is the opportunity to have more money in this fund to do additional work in other places as we move forward with projects. But right now, this is the budget as it exists today. <clears throat> and the figure of 72,986.45 is what we will have at the end of this year. Is the projected cash balance, correct? Yeah. It will be adjusted once we receive, actually receive the settlement or okay. for this particular fund budget won't receive the settlement but uh, yes it is the estimated cash balance at this time any other questions or comments you need a motion no we need, yeah, again, this is more for just informational, informational purposes Yes. And, and I, I do want to be clear, on a go-forward basis, every month there will be a budget. Each of these point ones will be on in the, in the packet every month. We'll provide yeah, a financial report that will show you the expenditures. Thank today. you very much. Yes. We, we've talked about it. We are now going to put that this in there. It's, it's only fair to you. It's <laughs> only fair to the transparency in the public. So. Okay. Right. Next order of business will be in the New Carlisle Economic Development Area. Again, within the packet, these encompass three different fund numbers, 4301, 4302, and 4303. 4301, at this point in time, the cash balance is $522,770. I think that's a seven and 65 cents. And 4302, both of these two funds are tax <coughs> increment financing uh, collection funds. The actual cash balance to date is four million. Or is five million seven hundred thirty 
Forty-three oh one. Yes. I'm not sure I picked up what you said the cash balance was. The current cash balance is five twenty-two seven seventy sixty-five. That'd be that okay, last. That, 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 okay, I'm sorry. The yep. five looked like a dollar sign. Okay. <laughs> this is this is a fund that is uh, supporting the, the the taxing the double tracking bond. Yes, it is. Yeah. It's projected to yes. And currently, the four hundred thousand is the projected payments, annual payments for the next three years. How long is the bond for? Nineteen years. Nineteen years. So we'll move it. We'll move the payment of the bond to a different uh, fund after that. So, so this uh, this account is actually the the new principal payment out of this account at the energy center. Mm -hmm. So as the energy center ramps up payments over the next couple of years, this will throw off more TIF increments that will then be able to cover the, the amount of the bond. So okay. that kick in after 2023. Yeah, it really it's it, the first several years were, were pretty high abatement percentages, then it rolls down to a, I think it goes from 85% to 75% to 40% over, over the 15 years of personal property abatement. Okay. The, the real property is at a 10 year abatement cycle and it's more of a, a straight line or a, a percentage line down. So, okay. so that'll, that'll throw more increment in. But again, the majority of allocation area two, when we set up and split back in 2016, Split the areas. Allocation area number one is the, the projects that generate TIF today. Allocation area two are the projects that will generate TIF into the future. So it's the one that's got the 25 year lifespan. And so the energy center and any other projects of note will be in allocation area number two. Thank you. Yep. Sorry for this. What are the sunset dates on those? So the allocation area number one sunsets in 20, I believe it's 2020. So when Steve just looked up his head. I believe it's 2026 or 2027. The other one sunsets in 2042. That's the length or, longest one. It, it is, or if we finish the projects earlier, we can close the tip down earlier. several months we've been working with Lawson Fisher to do uh, corridor work on Edison Road and Early Road and some work on Larson Drive, establishing right away, uh, acquiring right away in, in some cases from, from some of the businesses and some of the property owners so that we can have, uh, uh, in the case of Edison Road, 100 foot right away through the corridor. In the case of Early Road, we're going to do 80 feet of right away. Uh, with that work comes some subdivision work that needs to be done, some rezonings. Uh, some other plat work that needs to be done. So this sets a budget as we move forward through the process of having capital or having resources in place to, to deal with the, the nuanced work of, of the dedication of right away of, of replatting in a particular, a couple of particular cases. 
as we move through those project areas. This also will help to establish some, some survey work in the case where survey work needs to be done on, on some parcels related to some of that work. So that's, that's the, the, the scope of this proposal. Uh, again, the amount, if, if you were to break down the amount, and they do in their proposal on, on one of the budget pages, it's, it's uh, time and material. So as, they, as we do work out of those lines, uh, that money then gets spent uh, out of those lines. So this is a not to exceed amount of 108000 to do all of that work necessary to acquire the, the proper rights away and clean up rights away in cases uh, as we move through the area. Okay. Okay. I make a motion to approve. Second. A motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? Hearing none, so moved. I'll move into the Indiana Enterprise Center specific update. So the, the budget in your packet. Uh, trying to find it in my own packet. Um, what, what, we've, what we've been doing with the commissioners have asked is for kind of an updated schedule of, of all the contracts to date and, and what those amounts are. Uh, in your packet today, there should be a yellow box for the, the 108,000 that you just approved. But this shows kind of the master schedule of what we spent both on the Energy Center and then what we spent on the SBN Freight and Logistics part. Uh, so this is just an overview table. Or table. So, I, I think this kind of even came up at the last meeting. Where are we with Addendum 1 versus Addendum 2? We've been providing the commissioners. I've just been remiss and included it in the packet for, for you all. So this is more just information purposes at this point. And again, just as a reminder, these amounts are the actual contract amounts. It's not monies that have been expended to date. It's monies that have been approved to be expended. Correct. The, the last section at the bottom of the grants projects, again, is we if we were to receive grants that shows what the match amounts are and how that fits into into the budget amounts uh, or if we don't receive grants and we pull that money out that match money out uh, is, is that where it would work updates for the ADS grants and the Christie grant? So in that in that grant category of, of grants that you do receive and don't receive, we had applied for a grant for automated driving systems and a partnership grant with Navistar and Notre Dame. And uh, shortly after the meeting, I think it was a couple days after the meeting, we found out that we did not make the cut and did not receive the grant. Uh, we read through the grant uh, proposals. There were, and I can't remember the numbers, I think it was 73 total. Yeah, so 73 total proposals, eight were selected um, for the 60 million. Um, of those, Virginia Tech, who has a huge testing facility, received two grants. Uh, State of Ohio, in a partnership with the, the Midland Testing Facility that's owned by Toyota and the partnership with Honda, uh, they received a couple of grants. So what we found was, while we had a very good grant, a very competitive grant, uh, those that received the grants had either projects that were already in the pipeline or were, were new additions or modifications to existing projects being tested in existing testing facilities. <clears throat> so we were we were competitive but not competitive enough. We were the only county in all the 73 applications that applied it, so we were the only lead county as the lead agent. So I uh, plan a big space and, and sometimes you win, sometimes you lose, but this was a good opportunity to get involved. Since then, we've received a lot of uh, uh, comments, I uh, received a, a couple of project prospects yesterday, in fact, uh, related to ADS work that they saw the grants, very interested in what we were looking to do, uh, working to have conversations with Navistar to partner. So even just planning the space has, has opened up some opportunities and conversations. So. Uh, the next item on the list is, uh, speaking of grants, is uh, at the last meeting we had a conversation about uh, a grant that we're looking to submit on October 18th with South Shore, Chicago South Shore and South Bend Railroad. Uh, what you, so this was approved in, in principle by the Redevelopment Commission, went to the Board of Commissioners, and then was approved by the Board of Commissioners at their last meeting. This letter is a little different than the one you approved uh, uh, at, at your meeting because we needed to add in a, a provisional language. Uh, it would be the second to last paragraph that says, uh, CSS currently operates under a lease agreement. So that, that statement is actually a new statement. Um, it's, it's something that needed to be in the grant, something that needed to, to be in this letter so that it could be part of the, the grant submittal. So I just wanted to bring it back to you for, for your knowledge that the letter you approved is a little 
different. It's not materially different, it just has a minor change, but I just want to make you aware of that. Uh, the grant, uh, at this point in time, it's a $4.5 million grant. We have a, a partnership with South Shore where we're both in uh, for $800,000 uh, as matching partners. We received uh, a fund support from INM, AEP, uh, and, and also from INTECH, INCODE. So we have some other partners that are also helping us fund this grant to, to raise the profile and, and lower the percentage of, of the federal ask as we move forward. So uh, we think this is a great win for, for uh, the railroad and, and for opportunities uh, moving forward. So I just wanted to give you this letter and just let you know where we were in the process. That grant will be filed on the 18th of October. So, um, and then the last item on this list, item four, is, is probably one of the biggest wins. If I was in charge of throwing parades, I would for Jamie Woods and his staff and, and all the work they did with uh, finally acquiring Inland Steel uh, property. We had been working on an acquisition with Inland for over a year and a half on the southwest corner of Walnut and Edison, a uh, piece of property that not only the acquisition of that property, but then we also were able to acquire all of the right of way on the north side of Edison Road from Walnut all the way to Larison Court. So that, that gives us a 50 foot north of center corridor through that whole stretch. Uh, that deal closed uh, on, on the 26th of, of last month. So that was a huge win. The piece that you have before you today is uh, about a year ago, we had, uh, had before the commission a proposal for a utility easement through that piece of property with Commonwealth Utility. Commonwealth is the group getting the utility easements for second, uh, St. Joe Energy Center Phase Two. Uh, now that we own this property, this is the last of, I believe, 92 easements that they needed to get from the Energy Center Phase Two all the way to Stillwell, Indiana. So we have now, now that we've got this piece of property under control, uh, we will be taking a document to the redevelop or to the Board of Commissioners at their next meeting to sign an easement agreement to put that easement through the property. I've attached a map of where, where the easement sits through the property. Uh, you guys had previously approved it. I just wanted to, to bring this back to you just for your knowledge that now that we've done step A, we're going ahead with step B because the agreement that you all provided was subject to ownership of the property. So now that we own the property, we can move that easement ahead. So I just wanted to make you aware of that. But again, I would also note that the work that Jamie and his team did to get this to across the finish line was uh, beyond significant. And so I would just appreciate their work. Comments or questions related to the Enterprise Center updates? We'll move on to our St. Joseph County Economic Development Area number three, surrounding the Capitol Avenue area. Again, we've got a fund budget for 4401. The cash balance to date is $1,578,146, uh, similar to the other fund budgets. Again, it is showing the actual payments to date for the calendar year 2019. It shows what we are projecting to spend plus projecting to collect in December. Um, likewise, for the next two items of business, it's the Wyatt Economic Development Area and the Northwest Cleveland Road Economic Development Area. There's those fund budgets in the Wyatt. Our current cash balance is $350,105.55. And in Northwest Cleveland, the current cash balance is $20,431.05. And there is a note on Fund 4402 for Cleveland Road, just as a reminder, uh, these monies are tied to a bond for the development of the general sheet metal project in that area. And so as revenues are collected, they're generated and collected, those monies are then turned over to pay for portions of that bond that was privately secured per the development agreement. Can, can I ask a question? I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. The document you torn in Capitol Avenue? Yes. And I'm sure I'm wrong in missing it, but the yellow is where we're at today non-highlighted or things yet to happen. And I see $400,000 of income, $150,000 of expense. That hasn't happened, but our cash balance hardly moves, moves $80,000. So I'm not sure where the... We can double check, though. Yeah, I just think that there's something missing. There's probably an expenditure that's not shown somewhere. 
just a guess. Sorry. Or something's highlighted that shouldn't right. have been. Thank you. Well, there is a yes. So also in the highlighted, I've got in front of this says actual and encumbered. So we have a okay. contract that the funds have been encumbered. Okay. They have not been expended yet, but they've been that, set aside for that contract. That's probably this hundred eighty-five thousand multi-service. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. So okay. that's the difference. Okay. Thank you. Um, that's a good question. We like to show monies that have been encumbered because we want to, have to make sure that we understand that they're not available for expenditure elsewhere. Uh, move into any additional business. Thank you for getting this stuff to us. Yes, very much so. We'll, we'll try to do it at a little larger scale. <laughs> we'll change that. We're good. I'm really old. <laughs> well, what we can do is we'll keep that format the same, but then we can bring out just the 19 data yeah, and that, on it, format the season sure. agree, because that's really the easiest way to do it. I mean, this is helpful to everybody, mm -hmm. you know, the press and uh, us as well as uh, the public at large. Ms. Clark, yes. I have a comment. Just yes, relative to, to bringing the commission up to speed on the pricing of the 2019 special casting district bonds. That took place last week. Um, Steve Dalton here himself and folks from Mesro had really uh, pushed this item to uh, pricing, but we received very favorable pricing last week. A kind of a, a blended interest rate of a little above 2.7 on the bonds over the course of their term. Uh, Mr. Dalton was very pleased with it. I'll let him address kind of more of the specifics of it, but it's very favorable for the county. So you'll recall, Commission members, that we originally approved, you originally approved a $21 million bond. Thank goodness we didn't have to borrow $21 million. So we, <clears throat> you restricted that to $10.5 million, uh, which was the county's half. The market was so good, uh, and the expenses, the cost of issuance were so low, which was good news for everybody involved. One, we purchased bond insurance to improve our rating even higher than the county uh, bond rating uh, so that we could get even better pricing in the market. The interest rates are crazy low right now for all kinds of reasons, including Twitter posts. Uh, so we were able to get uh, a better rate than we expected in the 2.7 and 2.8 range. Uh, we were able to go interest only for many of the early years of the bond which is why it looks so low in the payment. I think it was probably one of the questions you were asking. Uh, the payment will be low for many years to come, and the principal has all been backloaded to the end of the bond to free up the economic development efforts of the Redevelopment Commission for many years to come out of the new Carlisle area. Um, we, we were more pleased than I expected to be. We went into pricing the day before, expecting around 3%, and the market actually chased lower during the day while the bond, while they were open for two hours and we were able to improve uh, three or four basis points better than we expected and lock in that rate. And uh, I, I can tell you that the team worked pretty hard. There was a lot of calls made. Uh, I watched the bond desk for a couple hours and, and they filled up really quickly on the long bonds because people wanted the guarantee of year 17, 18, and 19 at those 3% rates so they could get better rates and it filled up to twice the capacity of the bonds we had available. Uh, so they were actually able to push the rates down so, so that people would keep those bonds and get less than they were hoping to get on those bonds. So it was, it was a really good environment for Mesro, for the county, and for your economic development efforts for many years to come. We'll close October 17th. open the floor to public comment. If you please state your name, address, and limit your comments to three minutes. My name is uh, Dan Carter, and I live on uh, at 25285 Edison Road, South Bend, Indiana, out by Lydic. And I just wanted to bring a statement to the commission here that uh, with all this development going on, I was just wondering if we could incorporate the quiet zone in the Lydic area at the railroad crossings. Um, I didn't see it on the budget there, but I'd like to maybe bring it to your attention and possibly incorporate this as we move along with the South Shore development and uh, <clears throat> IDC in New Carlisle. Um, I know 
Well, I guess that's about all I want to state. I just want to bring it to your attention and I want to try to keep pushing this issue. It's been driving me crazy out there, uh, listening to these train whistles and um, with, uh, I, if we can get this incorporated from springtime for the little leaguers out there at Warren Park, that'd be great. Uh, Reigns of Life, uh, they got some issues with it. Uh, the Methodist Church there, they have a, a daycare center there that uh, um, the kids are out there playing and I'm sure they're right beside the tracks there. So I just wanted to bring this up to your attention and uh, if anything could be done, it'd be greatly appreciated. I know, um, you know I've got a few signatures for uh, um, to back this, but uh, if anything can be incorporated in the near future, that would be great. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comment? Seeing none, do we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, hearing none. Meeting is adjourned.